Hello, everyone. See Thanks here. for watching my presentation. I'm Xian Yu Chen. Our paper was caused by Xian Yu Chen, Jia Rui Jing, Wei Nan Zhang, Jun Jie Huan, Zi Ming Feng, and Yu Yong. Our paper discusses the problem of personalized recommendation. Personalized recommendations are an important part of modern e commerce and require us to assess the needs of different users. And the needs of users depend not only on their profiles, but also on their recently browsing history and the regular purchases they have made in the past. A great deal of work exists on this. We broadly classify them into three categories. The fourth is some traditional recommendation methods. They are mainly devoted to a general user interest modeling and ignored time factor. There are collaborative factoring based models, factorization based models like wet and deep learning for recommend systems. The second category is sequential pattern based model, which captures the sequential patterns of users. However, due to hardware and time constraints, it can only be applied to hundreds of lengths of user data. This has been done with uh, memory networks, resident neural networks, temporal point process, such as the paper Western recommender networks. The third category is based on search model which focus on searching useful information from historical data, ignoring the user's sequential patterns also. The example paper is uh, user behavior retrieval for click-through rate prediction. Considering these features of existing models, a subjective idea is to combine their strengths to overcome each other's weakness. However, there are some challenges. Fourth, how to incorporate the user's sequential patterns into this search-based model. Because users' interests are highly time-sensitive, and existing search-based models don't take this into account. Secondly, how can labeling information from historical data, it is the user feedback, be used more effectively in recommendation models? The main existing approach is to use this feedback as a label to supervise the model. While there are some other works has shown that the combining information from labels and features as input chain the model can significantly improve the model performance. However, directly missing the information will lead to label leakage questions. Thirdly, how to train both search-based model and predictive models in an end-to-end -end manner. Previous attempts has either manually designed a hybrid loss, loss function or apply RL in training. The former relies on loss design and hyperparameter tuning, while the latter algorithm usually suffers from low simple efficiently of the IL algorithm. So the design of the training algorithm is also an important challenge. Next, I will describe the motivation from which our model design comes. The figure on the right is a perfect example of these motivations. Fourth, we believe that information about the relevant items is sufficient in predicting users' interest without using the full historical sequence. For example, if a user wants to buy a lipstick, now information about her historical commitments purchase is obviously more valuable than information about her cell phone purchase. Secondly, users has valuable and drafting interests, and each interest has its own development process. For example, the purchase cycle of lipstick and cell phone is obviously different. So it is necessary to model the temporal pattern for each interest. Thirdly, user's silent behavior may be significantly influenced by their 
previous behavior. For example, when we observe that a user has recently purchased a cell phone in the short term, the probability that she will purchase a cell phone again now is small. This motivations us to incorporate users' feedback into the model. Now I will show an overview framework of our model Starlake. As shown in the figure, our model is can be divided into three modules. An object modeling module for processing load inputs, both items and users. A search-based module for searching useful information. And a time-aware module for extracting sequence patterns. Next, I will describe each module specifically. The first part is object modeling. This module will construct an embedding vector for each user and items. However, the classical neural networks, for example, multilayer perception MRP, have difficulty modeling the rich correlation between features, which can be captured by product-based models such as PNN, which is used in our model. And the formulation are as follows. The second module is the search-based module. It can be divided into the search for items and the search for users, both of which has basically the same formula. Fourth, there is the search for items. The left side of this formula is the set of items and in the historic data whose relevance exceeds a threshold value. The relevance is scored in two ways, hard search and soft search. Hard search is scored by the common categories among items. Soft search calculates the cosine similarity of item embedding. Combining the two gives us the adaptive search we actually use, where we control the width of the two search methods by a time value parameter tau, such that the word uh, a copy by the soft search gradually increase the with the training process. Note that the behavior data from our final search will be merged with a recently user behavior data to obtain final behavior data, which is to get the recently in chase. The search method for users is basically the same as the search method for items. Again, using a combination of hard and soft search and increasing the weight of soft search with the training process. And after the similar users are searched, we will also execute the item search once the for each similar user historical data. The third part is the time-aware module. Fourth, to make effective use of user feedback, we can cut the certain item embedding with the user feedback from the previous moment as the module input. The model is shown in the figure below, where we combine the improved GRU and attention mechanism to model the user sequential patterns by considering the influence of the user's previous feedback and the time interval in the browsing history. In this way, we get a hidden state for each item on the sequence. Next, we use the same attention mechanism to complete the aggregation of these hidden states to get the final representation of the sequence. As shown below, we get a representation for each user's sequence, and we have many singular users in addition to the target user. Therefore, we agree at least representations and go through an NLP to model the final probability representation. And log, log loss is used to optimize the parameters. Next is the experimental part, which we have done on three large data sets of Alibaba. The methods we compare fall into three broad categories, uh, sequential models, tall structure based models, and search-based models. Our old model includes the central version of Starlake, Starlake which temporal information remove, Starlake which recently sequence remove, and Starlake which label data as add. Here are the overall performance. There are many findings from it. Fourth, 
It's clear that the Starlack exhibits optimal performance compared to other modules. This can be explained by the fact that our module is combined the advantages of both search fast and time aware modules. Next, most of the sequential recommendation modules such as FSTM, time LSTM, uh, shows better performance compared to the tall modules such as ESMM, which shows that the importance of historical sequence for capturing user patterns. Next, observing the performance of Starlack after removing recently sequences, we can see that it shows a significantly decrease, indicating the effectiveness of the module. We did more we did more ablation experiments on this regarding the specific ratio of the two sequences, as shown in the next figure. We then look at the impact of the search based module. The removal of the search module from Starlack in fact grades it into a general sequential module such as LSTM which clearly performs less well than the star rate as shown in the table, indicating the effectiveness of the module. Another correlation is that the performance of the search based module, SIM, is the best of all the modules used for compilation. Also, we did some experiments on the search approach, and as shown in the next figure. Adaptive search arc performs hard search, and the gap increases as the search length increases. Now, looking at the performance of Starlack after removing time vector, the same decrease is observed, which verifies the importance of this factor. Turning our attention to user feedback again, we try adding labels as input on both the LSTM and Starlack modules and both obtain significant improvements. In some ways, this outweighs the benefits of more significant changes in the underlying user modeling architecture. We also did some analysis on the time complexity of the module. It can be seen that despite the need to retrieve the entire sequence, the Starlex temporal performance is not inferior to modules using only recent data and can even outperform most other models when using hard search. This gives us the confidence to apply it to real production. Moreover, to validate the effectiveness of Starlack in real-world applications, we deploy our approach into major project recommendation scenarios for a mainstream banking company. This application has millions of daily active users who create billions of users' laws every day in the form of implicit feedback, for example, click behavior. Both offline results and online results shows the effectiveness of our module. Finally, a conclusion. We offer three main contributions. First, we propose a novel framework named Starlack which captures the user's time-sensitive evolving demands via combining a search-based module and a time-aware module. Secondly, we propose to involve the user's previous feedbacks as input and reveal that this label information can improve the performance. Secondly, we design a new adaptive search mechanism, which gradually transforms from the hard search strip to the soft one. Okay, that's all. Thanks. Hello, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much. This was a very nice presentation uh, with a great overview. We do have uh, one of the second authors from Shanghai Jiao Tang University, uh, Jian Yu Chen, with us to answer questions. So if anybody in the audience has questions, feel free to unmute yourself. In the meantime, I can kind of get started on one question. I think the this was a great work. One, I'm really impressed by the actual online deployment games you saw. 
and it was very nice to see the offline online correlations like in the offline evaluation we mentioned that this method performs better and the same hold in the in the online evaluation so that was great to see the, the question which i have is around uh, like we, we looked at the global performance but often maybe if some user is in a category for the first time so they don't have any history relevant history for this category so the question then becomes um, what then will the search based model give get more high priority than the temporal model so did you start seeing some differences across say for for new category or for some discovery related categories then you don't have a lot of history for the user so then the model automatically starts picking up the more search based aspects than others any any comments on that would be nice uh yes uh because uh um okay uh You can see our model is uh, uh, compared to strands. We also use the uh, search sequence. For example, if we if the, we want to predict a user would buy a phone, we will search the his history that he uh, browsed the phone, and and we will use the second sequence is the recent sequence. Uh, for example, uh. The past one hour sequence. We will combine two these two sequence. The recently sequence is the uh search based model. The recent uh yeah or the recent sequence is the time model. These two parts can and we use here here the time aware model to capture the information. So our model can uh. Get a better result than the sequential mo module such as LSTM and the search based module such as SIM. I'm also very like this. I mean, it's amazing to see that this is deployed uh, in one of the productions as well. I mean, literally two of them in information flow and guess you like. So, could you comment on the latencies of any of these? Like, did you find, was it hard for you to, did you end up doing some model distillation or was the latency requirement already met by? Fast inferencing. Any comment on that for the audience? Uh, you mean here? Uh, yes. Uh, so in the inference time, I mean, did was it any custom model distillation happening, or uh, I mean, was it done on TPUs or GPUs? Like any any comment on the inference? Where, where yes. what kind of infrastructure? Uh, the we can see uh, the hard search. We are not use the model. Yes. Uh, oh, oh yes, here. We can uh, store the category group in the memory uh, pre previous. So, uh, if however the sequential model must to do the uh, LSTM, it has the step one by step. Right. And for example, the sequential model we will use about forty the forty of the lens. And in the in our model, I will use the we have two sequence both of, both of the sequence. We we'll use the 20, 20 lens. So our model will get a faster speed. Nice. 